morning everyone it is nine o'clock on Tuesday morning so we are here with our wise guys video of the week this week we're going to be talking about a partial seam so we have our little uh, town square topper pattern and of course I'm always trying to figure out what we can do with our little six-pack bundles so I've created this little pattern to go with a six pack so you get two toppers out of a six pack but in order to assemble this uh, topper you need to do a partial seam so if you look at the finished one up here you can see that not no seam ever goes totally to the end of the row so you have to figure out how to sew and be able to put it together without having a full straight line so the way we're going to do that is with this little half seam to start so with this six pack bundle i decided to split it into two different groups so oops so i picked this group which made this topper and it looks a little more like a fourth of july red white and blue kind of that old um, traditional colorway and then i took the other three and they gave me more of a Halloween feel, right? Your purple, your black, and your gold. So you can get two different seasons out of one six pack. So in order to do with three fat quarters, I needed to pick two of them. So I picked my purple and my blue, and those two were my center squares. So I had to cut my squares out of these two. And then out of these four, I had to cut my long rectangles so it's pretty simple piecing from each fat quarter I get two rectangles and from each of these squares I cut or each of these fat quarters I cut one square and then to assemble it I need to take my first rectangle and my square and I'm gonna lay them right sides together but this first seam, I can only sew halfway down. And I know I tried to do it this side in red, so you can see where I stopped. And I like to do a lock stitch here. And also when I sew with these, I always like to start in the corner of the square. So I'm gonna lay this down, but I'm actually gonna flip it and put it into my machine so my square is only, always on top. And then I'm going to stitch halfway down and stop. Then I'm going to take my next rectangle, which will now go across the top. So once I have this partial seam done, now I can sew all the way across this edge. So again, I'm going to lay my piece on there, right sides together. I always want to start in the corner of the square that way when i sew if there is if this one is a little bit too long i can always come back and trim it off if i start here and i end on my square side it's a little more difficult to deal with that so i would sew this long seam and i'm going to open that one up one thing i forgot to say when you do this first one you always want to iron towards the the side strip Okay. It's real easy to take this and iron towards your square, but it'll make it a little more difficult when you're doing that last seam. So remember to always iron towards the side strip. So again, after I flip this one open, I would iron towards the side strip. I would go around, I would add my third strip. The same way, I'm going to line it up with the corner of my square, and I'm going to sew this length. And then my fourth strip, and this is where, this is why I, I only have half of this seam. I need to flip this out of the way. Then I'm going to add this one. Start at the corner of my square. Add my strip this way. And now I'm just going to scoot this up a little bit. Actually take it off. Now I can finish this last seam because I'm going past my square and into my last side. So now I'm going to take and flip this and line it up. And this is where it's easier to have that iron towards the, 
the side so that when you flip it, it's a little easier and it lays a little flatter. I'm going to pin and then I'm going to finish that last seam. That's all there is to it. You're just adding four borders. It's just by doing that partial seam in the beginning, you can then add in your other three sides and then come back and finish. So that was doing this project with a bundle of fat quarters and splitting the fat quarters into two different packages. So each one of these has one color for your center and then one of the colors is two sides and the other color is your other two sides. So three colors per topper. The other way I did it is I took this little fat quarter bundle and instead of splitting it into three, three fat quarters into two different projects, what I did was I'm going to pick two of my main prints. They're going to be my center squares. And then I'm going to cut my two rectangles from each one of these. I'm going to cut my two rectangles whoops, from each one of these but then each topper is gonna to get one of these pieces, so I'm gonna have a lot more color. Let me hang one of those up. All right, so you can see here's my center square but my four sides are four different fabrics. And then my other one, again, is a different center fabric, but my four sides are going to be one each of these same ones I had up here. So again, from that six pack, I'm still getting two toppers. This one is just a little more of a scrappy feel to it because I'm using five fabrics where on the other one I was only using three fabrics. Again, this is that final seam. I left it open so I can show you where after I added my fourth piece on, I take this edge, I flip it over, I line it up, and then I can start here and finish that last seam. Now one thing that you can do with these is these make really nice big squares and if I made six of these and I put them side by side and I put a sashing in between them, I could have a really fast twin size quilt with basically four blocks and a couple sashings. So it could be really fun. Find some fun kids fabric or use a panel in this center square. Obviously your panel probably isn't as big as these squares but you can just add a couple borders around a cute little panel to make it the right size and then add your squares. One other thing you can do with this pattern is use a border print. Okay, so I've grabbed this one. Stay. Put a pin in you so you don't slide away. So here's a border print that I've used. Flip it around. So cute for the kitchen. Now this border print doesn't have exact repeats, but for this project, that's okay. This one has, this stripe is always the same with kind of all of my different bowls and mixers. Then I have a little stripe that has the aprons and a little stripe that has some of the tools. The biggest thing about this is it doesn't matter that these are different. It just matters that I cut the same height each time. So this stripe has to be the same width or height as this stripe, but they can be different um, designs to them. And what we created was this guy here. Okay, 
So whenever you're doing this project, whether you're doing this type or this one, you want to try to make your center square be non-directional because that way it's not always upside down for one person. However, your borders, because you're adding them on each side, you can, you can manipulate them so that they're always facing the right way. So if you have something that is going to be directional, you're better off to use it on one of your side strips and have your center squares be your non-directional ones. The one thing you have to do when you're using a border stripe is there is a little bit of math because every border stripe can be a different height. They're never all exactly the same. So there's a formula in the pattern. Yes, it's a math formula. You're going to have to do your math, ladies. We know you can do it, right? But there's a simple formula in there to figure out how big to cut this square. You can notice that this square was slightly bigger than my squares up here because the width of this row was a little skinnier than the, than the sides that I cut for this one. So you do have to do that little bit of math when you're working with the border stripe, but they just work up really cute and fun and fast. So this one you only need two fabrics because all four sides are from the same fabric plus your center square. So that is the basics of doing a partial seam and using some fat quarter packs to make two toppers out of one package. I hope you all are having a great day after this and we will see you next week. Bye.